I have spent the past few days digesting the charming and extremely convoluted world of Tin Man, a three-episode series which debuted in December 2007. The show broke records, becoming the Sci-Fi Channel's highest viewed programme overnight, with 6.3 million people tuning in. Yet, while it was certainly commended in 2007, the stereotypical characters, predictable plot and just ugly CGI make it a real slog to endure in 2021. Obviously, it goes without saying that the show is a drastic reimagining of the Wizard of Oz fairy tale, although I believe it takes the majority of its inspiration from the 1939 feature film. The first episode in particular is littered with references. Dorothy, or DG's waitress uniform, is the iconic blue and white dress from the film. Alan Cummings' character references not liking scarecrows as he walks past one, and the farmhouse, not pictured, is number 39, which is the year the movie was released to theatres. Now I will do my best to summarise the near five-hour plot into something brief and comprehensive. We meet our lead character, DG, living peacefully on Earth. She's bored and wants to do something more with her life than waitressing. Meanwhile, in the OZ, an evil sorceress named Azkadelia wants to plunge the entire mystical land into darkness. The OZ and its many realms are powerless against Azkadelia, yet she is informed that a young girl on Earth has the sole power to stop her evil plans. Slightly nervous about this, Azkadelia sends several armed guards to murder DG and her family. DG manages to escape, and her and her parents jump into a tornado portal and are transported to the OZ. Now alone, DG wanders the strange land looking for her parents, and along the way she runs into three familiar faces. Glitch, once an advisor to the Queen, has had his brain removed and now seeks to reclaim it. Kane, previously an officer of Central City, or a Tin Man as they are more commonly known, was forced to watch his family beaten and kidnapped, and is now after revenge. And finally, Ra, a cowardly creature whose species have strange telepathic abilities. He doesn't really want anything, and he just tags along. The four unlikely companions fumble along, narrowly avoiding capture from the sorceress until they reach the Mystic Man, portrayed by the great Richard Dreyfus. He informs DG that her parents are not her real parents, and she was actually raised here, in the OZ. Not only that, she's also Ascadelia's sister. It turns out that due to DG's selfish actions as a child, her sister ended up possessed by an evil witch. So in order to protect her, DG's real parents, the king and queen, sent her to Earth where she would be safe until she was ready to return and defeat Ascadelia. With the plan set, the friends amass a small army to storm the sorceress's castle, successfully destroying her evil machine and freeing the kidnapped king and queen. DG also manages to get through to her sister and release her from the witch's control. In the end, they all live happily in the revitalised OZ. Now, as a premise goes, this isn't bad. It's got a good amount of lore, likeable characters, and the potential for some intense action. The issue is, there is not enough here to justify four and a half hours. Each episode is 90 minutes and you really start to feel it, especially in episode two, which really only feels important in the last 10 minutes or so. There are a fair amount of subplots, but aside from Cain looking for his family, none of these have any significant weight. But what did people think at the time of release? Well, as I mentioned, it was generally received positively. I couldn't find many reportings or published reviews, but numerous bloggers and independent presses said its scope and its use of CGI was outstanding. One writer even called it the last great thing sci-fi ever produced, before they moved on to more Sharknado-esque properties. In the past few years, the show seems recently to have garnered a cult following, on Amazon Prime, the only place I was able to find Tin Man, the show sports an almost perfect 5-star average from around 50 reviewers. And on sites like Pinterest and DeviantArt, there is a surprising amount of fan art and accounts dedicated solely to this once-forgotten relic. Overall, Tin Man is an ambitious, modern retelling of The Wizard of Oz, which feels very of its time. 
It has strong ideas and there's definitely talent involved with a prolific cast and visionary showrunners. However, with such a heavy reliance on CGI, it's very hard to watch in 2021, where we now have series such as Game of Thrones and The Mandalorian set in a new golden standard for TV. I believe Tin Man would have worked much better as a two-hour feature film, as although it was popular in 2007, it very quickly faded into obscurity. I hope you enjoyed my presentation on Tin Man. I can't exactly recommend it, but if it sounds up your alley, then go for it. Thanks for watching.